This is the uh, Parkland Pond, which is very circular. Um, it's been here since at least 1678. Um, it's not part of the, the system which comprises the High Spring Canal Pond uh, uh, Cascade Pond system. Uh, it's uh, near surface groundwater fed uh, and surface water fed. Uh, originally it was um, more oblong um, in shape with it appears from the drawings an inlet that came off here off this slope here so I, we're guessing that there was a supply of water uh, predominantly from up there. All of the maps through the tithe map, etc., up until the 1972 Ordnance Survey map show this as being oblong in shape, um, with that little nib out of it. Uh, post 1972, when the whole area was developed, this was turned into a, um, a roundabout, for want of a better term, uh, and the pond made um, circular. Now, there's no obvious water supply coming into it. Any water supply that comes off the area at the top there has all been culverted, diverted around the bottom of the church, um, along the bottom um, and beneath the canal. Um, so this now gets its water supply, as it probably originally did, from near surface groundwater and surface water, less that supply up there. The level therefore changes in relation to how much water is coming in and it's likely to be um, the same level as the near surface groundwater. So in other words, there's not a lot we can do to get water into it without it running out again. Um, so the idea is to keep it as it is, as a natural fed pond. Currently there is an outlet from it that runs from just in here through the parkland, but I think that is just a civil engineering design that was put in in the 1970s. Um, and probably is, is, is never used because once the water level comes up to a certain amount it, it, it sheds off elsewhere. So the plan with this is to reform the post-1972 circular shape, um, dress it up with the uh, planting um, as required by the landscape architects and basically leave it as it is. That's the idea. The spring, this is the spring, Heinz spring, um, which um, is supplied from uh, limestone bedrock, which lies on top of um, clay bedrock. Um, obviously the, uh, the water percolates through the overlying uh, strata, through the limestone, doesn't go any further than the clay, runs along and comes out of this very slight slope. Uh, it may well be there's a, a discontinuity in the rock just about here, um, or it may well be purely topography, but water has come out of this spot here, the Hind Spring, for many centuries. Um, and because of that, it's been protected, it's been important, and uh, in the 18th century was developed by um, Richard Woods for um, the system that we start to see in front of us. Although this is a favoured point for the, for the water to come out of the slope, it, it does come out elsewhere. Uh, especially um, you'll see the uh, limestone edges to the uh, round pond and to the canal pond, water constantly seeps out um, and in the base of the ponds um, on uh, that side water uh, does, a, does arise from it. But the basic principle of the start of the hydrological system as, as far as we're concerned is that it's here, this is the highest point. So from this point the water comes out of the spring goes into the round pond, cascades over and down into the, into the canal pond. At the same time, small amounts are coming, but here it's defined as being the source of supply to these ponds. In order to improve the supply of water here, uh, we're going to excavate a trench up through the bedrock, a uh, fairly deep trench, put a drain in it and run it through to the back of here so that we're not changing the supply of water uh, from upslope directly into the hind spring, but we are going to augment it from offside if there's extra water there um, to do so. And that will hopefully just improve the supply of water. Um, at the same time, um, the hind spring may have crept down slope over, uh, over a number of years. Uh, we're going to put a, a bund in behind to build the water level up very slightly, only eight inches or so just so that it can visually come out into a very small basin and then run off into the um, round pond. Whereas at the moment, it's little more than 
a chamber and if you lift the lid, lift the lid up you can see a tiny fissure in there and the water comes out so we're going to try and lift it up a little bit um, and make it a much more of a feature um, as it should be this pond is perfectly circular perfectly circular and the uh, margin has been built up with uh, the local Blisworth limestone um, so it's a very formal structure um, and the trees they look pretty but they're not part of the designed landscape and because of the structure of the, the rubble stone walls um, they have started to um, damage it severely and they will eventually collapse and the ponds will be lost. There's other benefits of taking the, um, the, the trees down because there is a lot of leaf fall, a lot of organic matter. Most of the water that comes into here is clean, it's coming out of the limestone. There's not a lot of mineral sediment in it and the only um, uh, sediment that comes into it is the organic matter so removing the trees will improve water quality improve depth etc so there's a number of reasons but the main reason is the landscape perspective um, protection of the walls the inflow from the high in spring will come in approximately as you can see the remnant of that um, rubble stone wall over there um, the water level won't uh, won't change considerably if much the uh, outside of the of the pond will be much better defined it will be a perfect perfect circle as it was intended to be exposed with uh, level limestone uh, rubber walls with uh, turfs and path as appropriate up to up to the edge of it this structure here will change um, considerably the old wooden structure uh, is going there's a lot of engineering brick being done there as part of the uh, Milton Keynes um, development um, which is functional um, and it was appropriate for them to do it at the time but it's not really in keeping so that's going to be rebuilt with a with a local Blizzworth limestone and water is going to uh, cascade over there um, it's going to be orientated slightly so that you can see it from the the walk over at the outfall to the um, uh, canal pond um, so this will be a really really pretty formal structure uh, open um, and visible from, from all around. Well, the bridge will tie in with the um, peripheral stoneworks that we've got. Um, the limestone um, uh, rubber walls will tie in with the face of the bridge, which will also be uh, limestone, which will have apertures in it and a weir crest directly beneath it. The water will weir over that beneath this replaced wooden bridge and then it will cascade down into the into the canal pond. When I say cascade, there's only the amount of water that's coming into the system from the hind spring, so it's more of a, a trickle, but the structure's a cascade. When this was built in the uh, mid to late 1970s, it was clearly built in, in two parts. Uh, one part designed to take low flows as anticipated over the hind spring, and this part uh, designed to take high flows because at one stage, um, the high street um, surface runoff system was connected in through the hind spring. Now, fortunately that failed very, very early. It was got blocked up and that means that there's no pollutants coming into the system. But this was designed to a civil engineering standard so that if the anticipated water off the village came through here, then this weir would cope with it. This is why it's like this. Because it's not experienced those kind of flows for decades, it's now just a bit of a sludgy mess. And we're gonna replace that with, with a, something, something much prettier. Water level of the pond is low because the dam's broken. So the retaining structure at the end of the pond, which is supposed to retain the water level at a particular elevation and the water wears over that particular point, uh, has been lost, it's failed. So in fact, most of the water uh, at this level is, is retained by the vegetation. So if the vegetation is removed or when it's removed, the water level will drop even more. Um, but the design incorporates a complete new structure at the end there to lift the water level back up to what we consider to be uh, 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 the original level. So it's just a modern failure uh, and it will be repaired. In this particular pond, um, one of the interesting aspects is whilst we've got limestone on that side of the pond, on this side less so. There's a, there's a geological fault that runs down here and the material here is quite a bit softer on this side of the pond than that side of the pond. So here we need to do um, quite a bit of bank strengthening works in order to be able to guarantee that we lift the water, or hopefully guarantee, we can lift the water level up and, and retain it so that it all goes down underneath 
um, the canal. What that uh, means is that all of this water needs to be drained out first. Now, quite simply, that's likely to mean um, excavating a trench, making that breach through that dam worse, and then emptying all the water through, um, and then draining it all out, and allowing um, some weeks or some months for it to drain completely so that this embankment can be dealt with. Um, fortunately, because there's not a great deal of water coming into these systems, because it's a spring-fed system, that's a groundwater system, there's no flash flooding coming through here, or not a lot. Um, it means that most of the water can be drained out by gravity rather than over pumping, which can be expensive and noisy. So it should be relatively simple um, to do. So the idea is to drain the ponds, rebuild the embankments, where there is some um, uh, clay um, lining to replace that, to basically restore it to how Richard Woods intended it to be, um, lift the bottom end up, and hey presto, we've got a working pond again. This is a manhole with a drain that uh, comes from the village uh, high street surface runoff system. Now, as I said earlier, some of it runs into the, um, uh, into the bottom end of the hind spring uh, and the rest of it um, should come down here and enter in at the bottom end of the canal pond by passing the system. This has not worked probably since the very early 1980s. Uh, interestingly, so there's no water in here, or there should be no water in here, but if we lift the tops up, we see that there is water in here and at a higher level of the pond, which gives us extra comfort that the water is coming through from this limestone and sitting in here, which is why we're going to intercept this water, which now is in here and is running to waste on the downstream side of the canal pond, uh, intercept it higher and take it into the um, hind spring area. So these will all come out. These, there's, a, there's a chamber here and there's a chamber up there and there's one just a bit further down. They're all coming out. This is the, um, uh, the culvert that passes underneath the canal. Um, the water comes through the uh, canal pond. This should be a weir structure which retains the water um, in the pond. At the moment, as I said earlier, most of the, that water level is, is held up by, by all these weeds that we see here. There's um, forget-me-nots and mint and uh, willow, willow herb, etc. Uh, so when this is taken out, the water level will, will drop dramatically. But what you can see here, there's a, there's a structure here, the water cascades over and then goes down through the culvert that goes completely underneath the canal. Now, uh, we're not going to touch the canal culvert at all. Um, but what we are going to do is improve the flow of water into the, into the culvert. So this will be rebuilt um, as, a, uh, as a structure with a, a walkway uh, across it, which uh, looks up um, towards the cascade from the, from the round pond. Um, this will be um, made secure and touched up, but, but otherwise um, nothing else. The key thing here is to raise the water level within the canal pond and um, make it more um, make it more attractive. The, the actual entrance to the culvert underneath the canal is it's of engineering significance. It's, it's, it's well constructed. So this will be constructed in such a way there'll be a grate here so that you can see through it and you'll be able to see the water and hear the water cascade and then go through. But crucially this will all be protected with grates etc so it's safe and there should be um, no large woody debris etc to get through into the into the culvert because we do need to protect that. Um, so this is a, a, a major point and it will make a dramatic difference to the canal pond. This is the cascade pond. Um, there's a cascade um, um, built of concrete and uh, engineering brick. Um, the elevation's quite uh, a bit higher than the, um, uh, than the culvert which goes on underneath the, uh, the old railway line there. Um, the uh, pond itself is in actually pretty good condition. It doesn't look it, but the structure of it is sound and there's a good clay line bed. Uh, it's full of leaves and um, uh, obviously there's a lot of a tree encroachment here. Um, there's a lot of sediment in there, a lot of organic sediment that comes out. It's smelly and it's going to be horrible, but um, uh, it'll be, it'll be, should be a relatively simple job to clean this out, um, albeit the cascade works will be um, relatively major. The culvert that comes underneath the um, canal um, will be um, rebuilt and entered just at, at water level and this should turn out to be a rather pleasant spot.
This is the uh, outfall structure and cascade uh, for the Cascade Pond. Um, it's not running at the moment. The water's still coming into the pond and still coming out of the pond, but it's bypassing this. It's, it's eroded down the outside and, it, and it's flowing down either side of the, the small channels. Now that's likely to be due to um, the trees on the site. The trees uh, have got in, um, dislodge some of the some of the work water's found its way through and exploited it and gone so for that reason the trees on the banks will go um, but this area will be, will be retained as, as as quite a pleasant more secretive place um, um, all of the trees within you know the willow scrub within the pond itself will go as well and the water should cascade over the new structure which um, in essence will be very similar uh, a dished engineering brick um, lower race with Staffordshire blue um, bricks but the upper race at the moment with this gentle dish on it which is now just concrete will be um, uh, the concrete element will be lowered as, as, as a support uh, and it will be faced with a nice uh, limestone so you'll have a limestone which will marry up with the works on the upstream side of the canal which will then come over um, the engineering bricks which will tie in with this as it is um, now and there'll be a small bridge um, across the top to stand and um, look over the pond and to look down um, this stream here which will be cleaned out and banked up um, and then through to the uh, there'll be better access made uh, back up to the railway line. And this is the culvert that goes underneath the old railway line. Um, this marks the, the termination of, 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 the, of the works. Um, it's a, it's a good culvert, we've inspected it and uh, it's absolutely fine. It's built with uh, stone walls with uh, brick barrel work. It's nice and wide and it uh, has historically taken all of the water that's been designed to come into the system, including the, um, the storm flow um, uh, from the village, which is now not coming through here. Uh, so this is the termination of the works. The stream will be cleared out and the banks um, are finished off nicely with, uh, with a bit of limestone. So it'll be a, a pleasant conclusion to the project.